In this video, we will show that distributive laws are equivalent to particular eilenberg mohr lifts and Claisley extensions. We'll use the joint situations F, G, and F prime, G prime with induced monads H and H prime, respectively. We restrict the general case of eilenberg mohr liftings to those of the following form. Recall that if S tilde is an eilenberg mohr lift of S through G, G prime, where G prime is the forgetful functor for the eilenberg mohr construction, then there exists a natural transformation lambda from g prime f prime s to s g f such that a and b hold. And we restrict the general case of Claisley extensions to the following form. And recall that if t hat is a Claisley extension of t along f and f prime, where f is a free functor for the Claisley construction on the monad h, then there exists a natural transformation sigma from t g f to g prime f prime t such that a and b hold. Restricting to the eilenberg mohr liftings and Claisley extensions of the forms of 1 and 2 respectively on the right, we have the following result. 1. The assignment big lambda, which we gave last time, and takes an eilenberg mohr lift S tilde of S to the following natural transformation, which satisfies 1 A and B on the right. And this is a one-to-one -one correspondence. For 2, we have the assignment big sigma, which we gave last time, and takes a Claisley extension t hat of t to the following natural transformation, which we showed satisfies 2 a and b on the right. And this is a one-to-one -one correspondence as well. To prove 1, we define the map, which we'll call curly s, from the collection of natural transformations lambda satisfying 1 a and b on the right to the collection of eilenberg mohr lifts s tilde of s, where curly s lambda is the functor which takes an a object a to the eilenberg mohr object s g a with action s g epsilon a lambda g a and the amorphism f to s g f. To verify curly s lambda a is a well-defined object of the eilenberg mohr category for the monad h prime, we need to show it respects the unit and multiplication of h prime. For the unit, we show that s g epsilon a lambda g a a to prime s g a is equal to the identity on s g a. Since the definition of the H prime action is natural in A, we can verify this by using string diagrams, where the left-hand side of the equality is given by the following string diagram. And then by using 1A above, we arrive at the following string diagram. But by the triangle identity for FG, this gives us the identity natural transformation on SG, which is what we wanted to show. Then to show that curly S lambda A respects multiplication of the monad H prime, we need to verify the following equation where the first expression has the following string diagram representation. And by naturality, we can deform the diagram by lowering and raising the dots, and then use the property 1b to arrive at the lower expression. Therefore, curly S lambda a is a well-defined eilenberg mohr object. Moreover, it is easy to see that the assignment on a morphisms is well-defined by the naturality of lambda and the co-unit epsilon. And also note that by definition, g prime curly S lambda is equal to SG, showing that curly S lambda is an eilenberg mohr lift of S. We still have to verify the one-to-one -one correspondence. And to do this, we show that curly S is the left and right inverse to big lambda. To show it is a left inverse, it is enough to show curly S big lambda S tilde on an A object A is equal to S tilde A, since G prime is defined to be UH prime, and G prime curly S big lambda S tilde is equal to S G, which is also equal to G prime S tilde, because curly S lambda S tilde and S tilde are eilenberg mohr lifts of S. And we also recall that G prime F is just the underlying E prime morphism F. But note that by definition of the co-unit epsilon prime in the eilenberg mohr construction, the H prime action of S tilde A is equal to the co-unit epsilon prime on the component S tilde A. So we have reduced the problem to showing that S G epsilon A big lambda S tilde is equal to epsilon prime S tilde A. These morphisms are natural in A, so we can use string diagrams again to show this. The left-hand expression is given by the following string diagram. Then using the triangle identity for the adjoint situation FG, we arrive at epsilon prime S tilde as desired. Therefore, curly S is a left inverse to big lambda. Next, to show that curly S is the right inverse of big lambda, by definition, big lambda curly S lambda is equal to the following natural transformation. But recall that the co-unit epsilon prime curly S lambda is SG epsilon lambda G. So we can rewrite this expression as G prime SG epsilon F 
g prime lambda h, h prime s eta. Giving the string representation of this, we can use the triangle identity for the adjoint situation fg, which gives us back lambda, which is what we wanted to show. Therefore, curly s is the right inverse of big lambda, and thus big lambda is a one-to-one -one correspondence, which finishes the proof of one. For two, we define curly t from the collection of natural transformations from th to h prime t, which satisfies two a and b, to the Claisley extension t hat of t, where curly t sigma takes an object a of the Claisley category to f prime t a, and the Claisley category morphism f to the composition f prime t f followed by f prime sigma a double prime followed by epsilon prime f t a prime. We need to verify that curly t sigma is a well-defined functor. To show that it preserves composition, let f and g be a composable pair in the Claisley category. Then recall that the Claisley category composition of g f is equivalent to the composition of e-morphisms f followed by h g followed by the multiplication mu a double prime. So we want to show that curly t sigma takes this composition to the composition in the category a prime so we give the diagram where the top purple composition is curly t sigma on gf, and the bottom blue composition is curly t sigma g, curly t sigma f. We then use a natural transformation of sigma and epsilon, which shows that the two left squares commute. By the property 2b, the top right diagram commutes also. And again, by naturality of epsilon, the two bottom right squares commute. Therefore, the outer diagram also commutes. And thus, curly t sigma respects composition. To show it also respects the identity morphisms, recall that the identity for the Claisley category is the unit eta of the monad h. Then curly t sigma on the identity of a is equal to epsilon prime f prime t a, f prime sigma a, f prime t eta a. And this is equal to epsilon prime f prime t a, f prime eta prime t a by the property 2a which is the identity on curly t sigma a by the triangle identity for f prime g prime. Therefore, curly t sigma respects identities, and thus curly t sigma is a well-defined functor. Next, we need to verify that curly t sigma is a Claisley extension of t along f, f, and f prime. In other words, curly t sigma f is equal to f prime t. Recall that the free functor for the Claisley construction takes an e-morphism f to the morphism hf eta a. To show equality on morphisms, we write the composition of curly t sigma f on f in blue. Then we use the naturality of sigma, the naturality of epsilon prime, the property 2a, and the triangle identity for f prime g prime, giving us the equality with f prime t f. Therefore, curly t sigma is a Claisley extension of t. And thus, curly t is a well-defined assignment. Next, we verify the one-to-one -one correspondence. We want to first show that curly t is a left inverse of big sigma. So given a morphism in the Claisley category, f, we want to show that curly t big sigma t hat on f is equal to t hat on f. We unwind the definitions giving us curly t big sigma t hat f is equal to the following. Note that the underlying green part is f prime big sigma t hat. This composition we can write out in diagram form as the composition of the blue morphisms. Then we use the naturality of epsilon prime and the triangle identity for f prime g prime to reduce the problem to showing curly t big sigma t hat f is equal to t hat on the morphism epsilon f a prime f f. But recall that the co-unit epsilon f a prime is equal to the identity on h a prime in the category e. And also recall that the free functor f acting on f is equal to hf eta a. And so the composition epsilon f a prime f f in the Claisley category is shown in the following diagram. We use the naturality of eta and the unit law for the monad h, giving us equality to the e morphism f, which is what we wanted to show. Therefore, curly t is the left inverse of big sigma. Finally, we want to show that curly t is a right inverse of big sigma. We again unwind the definitions and note that curly t sigma epsilon f is equal to epsilon prime f t f prime sigma f prime t epsilon f. And so we get the following expression, which we write in green in the following diagram. But since epsilon f is equal to identity h, we see the upper triangle commutes. Then by naturality of 
eta prime, the square below it commutes. And finally, by the triangle identity for f prime, g prime, we have the bottom triangle commuting. Therefore, we arrive back at sigma. And thus, big sigma is a one-to-one -one correspondence, which finishes the proof. Then as a corollary, we have if s and t are monads on E, then a natural transformation, lambda, from Ts to st is a distributive law of t over s, if and only if curly s lambda, as defined above, is an eilenberg mohr lift of s through the forgetful functors of the eilenberg mohr construction of the monad t, and curly t lambda is a Claisley extension of t along the free functors of the Claisley construction on the monad s. The proof is easy to see since in this situation 1 a and b and 2 a and b above become the axioms for a distributive law of t over s when we make the appropriate substitutions. And that completes this section.